Marimo has a new command, and this allows you to generate full notebooks from scratch using a prompt. So as a first motivating example, let's consider this one, make me a pretty interactive 3D matplotlib chart. If I now hit enter, then this is the notebook that it generates. A few things to note right off the bat, it can actually take a small while for this notebook to generate because we are communicating with an LLM here, but you'll also notice that this code does not run automatically. We really force you to run this manually because in the end, it is an LLM generating this code and there is a small chance that you might end up running something that you really don't want to. In this particular case, it feels safe. So I'm just gonna run everything now. And when I then go and toggle the app view, one thing that you'll notice is that indeed I do get a very pretty interactive matplotlib thing. I'm definitely able to increase the X range. I'm also doing the same thing with the Y range over here. And it is indeed a pretty 3D matplotlib render. The fact that we're able to generate these notebooks out of the blue also makes you wonder what might be very compelling use cases for a technique like this. So I tried out a few things and I did notice that there is actually this one educational use case that's actually worth giving a spin. Again, just as a demo, what I'm doing now is I'm trying to create myself a tutorial about a new technology. And in this particular case, I'm just taking NumPy. But what you can ask is to make a tutorial about NumPy, but also that you make sure that there are cells that allow for me to try stuff out. By adding that sentence, I am making sure that I get something more than just a big markdown document. But at this point, it's also good to know that we take a prompt like this and we actually wrap it around some extra instructions to make sure that OpenAI, which is the LLM that we currently use, understands a few things about Marimo, such as it's able to generate proper cells and that it's aware of some of the internals as well as APIs that are available. Let's see what happens when I run this. And what I get here indeed does look like a NumPy tutorial. There are some segments that are all about Markdown. And then there are other segments where I'm also able to try out the code and experiment myself a little bit. In this case, again, I'm picking NumPy because it's an easy example. But I can imagine if there's a new library that you're interested in learning, and especially if that library suits itself very well for a notebook environment, then this can actually be a pretty interesting way to learn more about it. There is this one extra avenue that is interesting, albeit a bit risky, and that is that you can ask for a full-on analysis. And this won't always work, but there are these data sets that are common enough that public resources are just known, such that the LLM can actually pull in a public data set for you. Again, you have to get a little bit lucky here, but one thing that I was able to do is I was able to ask it to analyze the historical Sumper Olympic results and confirm if there is a relationship between gold medals and income of a country. In this particular case, I'm also explicitly asking for it to show me a chart. And it turns out that in this particular case, these are well-known data sets that appear on a lot of blogs. The Tidy Tuesday blog in particular has this one Olympic medal data set and GDP, well, that is also available on a lot of GitHub data sets, so it was able to find a repository for that as well. It then proceeded to do a little analysis with pandas, joining and doing some group buys, and then at the end it was able to generate me this chart that shows the relationship between GDP and gold medals in the Summer Olympics. Now again, I do want to stress that it's going to be very hard for me to guarantee that this will always work, but if you have a suspicion that you're asking a question about a data set that should be quite well known, or if you want to have a notebook that is basically a template but uses a very standard data set, like the Titanic data set to get started, then prompting with this technique actually does kind of work too. Now to wrap up this video, I figured I might show you this one final prompt. And the thing that's interesting here is that this prompt is big enough that I figured it would be good to write that in a separate file. The benefit of this is also that if I want to make a small change, then working from a file is nicer than working on a string in the command line. But the main thing I really want to show you here is the fact that this is a query about simulation. To explain the setup, there are these things like Lego minifigures. These are collectible items. Every season, there's a new batch of them, and you can try to collect all 16. And I was just kind of wondering in the probability theory behind it, because you can imagine that you can buy 16 packs, but it doesn't guarantee that you're going to have 16 unique items. So how many of these packs do you have to buy in order to guarantee that you have a full set? And this was a very interesting question to me. So I figured, hey, can I maybe... And the really nice thing about simulation, by the way, is that we aren't reliant on the existence of some data set that we might not have access to. The nice thing about simulation is that technically, all we really need is a notebook. So simulation queries tend to lend themselves quite well for this new command. And in this particular case, it generated me a very pretty document. I'm looking at it from app mode now, but when looking at it from app mode, I can definitely see a chart that ran a good simulation. There's some analysis of the simulation results. And again, because it's a simulation thing, I don't need an external data set and this can be seen as a very nice place to get started. I can make changes to the file as I see fit, and if I really like the result, I can go to this hamburger tab over here and download the Python code for this notebook. 
This new command is a really fun feature to play around with, so I hope you'll give it a spin. The only thing I do want to mention is that we have a batch of OpenAI credits that we're using for this, and those are not infinite, and they will run out at some point. So if you're eager to give this a spin, sooner rather than later would be a good idea.